it seems like we're on a countdown clock, I'm being told, so let's, uh, good afternoon. This is uh, the final breakout session of the day. My name's Jesse Wolfson. I work at Domo and Customer Success. Uh, I'm not gonna speak for much longer other than to say thanks for coming and uh, to introduce you to Tracy Yalensis. Tracy is the uh, head of global marketing for Conduit. Conduit is a massive uh, business process and digital uh, company that handles uh, relationships with a, a huge majority of some of the biggest companies in North America and globally. And so uh, over to Tracy to tell you a little bit about their journey with Domo and what they've uh, done in marketing, which is uh, truly outstanding. And for those of you who have, uh, during the course of the presentation, want to come up or ask any questions, please feel free to do so at the end. And Lyndon Bai is here uh, from Conduit who uh, has significant expertise in their digital marketing solution and could talk to you at uh, offline or after this meeting about some of the things that they've done technically to enable what you're going to hear about today. Tracy, over to you. All right, thank you guys. Hey, I'm thrilled to be here at Domo Palooza. And uh, again, my name is Tracy Alensis. Uh, I lead the marketing team at Conduent. And what we want to talk about today, since this track is about culture and adaption, and adoption, is our journey to a data-driven culture for marketing. And so really it's about our, our overall transformation as a company, but it's also how we're leveraging Domo in this uh, transition, and then finally the value that we realized. So um, I'm gonna take you through that, and, and like Jesse said, at the end, we'll stop, we'll have some questions, uh, happy to try to answer any questions that you have. And so, but first, as we talk about Conduent, I think it's a good thing for me to give you a little bit of context about the company and what Conduent is um, so that you can understand how we're applying the marketing and Domo to help us do the marketing. So if you think about Conduent, Conduent is really the, the heart of the intersection between our clients and their constituents. So what do I mean by that? We process the digital interactions between our clients, and our clients are you know, most of the Fortune 100, large, over 500 government agencies, and their end users. So it's the patients, the shoppers, the citizens, the commuters. So if you think about it, just to give you a couple of examples, um, if you think about we process about 46% um, of all the toll transactions in the United States. So every time you go through an Easy Pass or a Sun Pass or any of those types of toll booths that are all electronic, that's us. And what we're doing as you go through that toll booth is we are looking at the transponder, connecting that with the account holder, and making sure that we're charging that account holder appropriately. Well, you know how it is when, I think, probably all of us have gotten one of those tickets, right, where you've gone through and the transponder for whatever reason doesn't activate or you don't have a transponder. What we're doing is we're using high-speed photography, looking at the license plate, understanding what that license plate is, automatically reconciling with the DMV, and then charging the appropriate, sending a bill to the appropriate driver. And so if you think about the interactions at massive scale, we're doing that about four and a half million times a day. So that's what we mean by interactions at massive scale. And the only way we can do that is with these technology platforms that are enabling all of that on the back end. So that's who Conduent is. And the, the thing of it is, and the marketing challenge, is that we are the world's largest provider of diversified business services. So if you think about that, we serve all of these industries that you see around the outside of the wheel. And what we do for those industries are a, these horizontal uh, solutions that you see over here, like human resource services, total benefits outsourcing, learning services, finance accounting and, and procurement. Those are the kinds of solutions that we provide to all of these industries. And then in addition, for the ones that are in the darker blue, we have industry-specific solutions like tolling, like off-street parking. Um, so those are, that's kind of how to think about Conduent. And this slide just gives you a sense of the kinds of scale 
that we touch each and every day. So for example, we manage 43% of all child support payments in the United States, or 55% of all SNAP payments in the United States, um, or 50% of all workers' compensation claims. So it's just a massive amount of data and uh, processes that we're managing on a day-in, day-out basis, but that gives you a clue that says, from a marketing perspective, we've got to create marketing for each of these industries and each of these horizontals. And kind of pulling that all together is really one of our major marketing challenges. So our key priorities from a marketing team are we've got a position conduit for consideration. We also have to establish conduit as a technology-led digital interactions company because people think of us as, oh yeah, you're that call center company. And that's not who we are, and there's no way we'd be able to process all of those transactions if we weren't a technology-led company. And finally, we want to accelerate the sales cycle across each of these industries and each of these horizontals. And so um, that's our, our third goal, but the one that I'm going to focus on today. So probably everyone has heard that culture eats strategy for breakfast. And that is so absolutely true. And so for Conduent, really the culture that it takes to embrace this data-driven anatomy of how we're trying to operate as a company is you've got to start with a growth mindset. We need people that are going to come in and, and you look at this first uh, quadrant here of the people, we need our people to be courageous and optimistic and resilient because the pace of change is amazing. And then we also need them to be empathetic and collaborative because they've got to work together but also understand everything that we're doing is in service of that end user. And so that's kind of some of the attributes that we're looking for from a people perspective. And then in the technology um, components, the technology has to have a purpose, right? So if we're trying to implement this technology and what we've tried to do with Domo is we, we created a purpose and a reason and, and it's really to drive to accelerating the sales cycle so that people understand that there's a reason behind it. But we also need our people to be digitally motivated and curious. They've got to ask questions. They've got to want to really understand um, the, the technology. And then on the process side, again, that process has to have a goal, but it also has to be data-driven. But data-driven with ubiquitous data access, right? Everybody's got to have access to the data or to the right level of data so that they don't feel like they're being left out. But also what we've learned along the way is that, you know, we've had to create consistency among the metrics but also be agile and adaptable. Because we created a lot of Domo scorecards. The trouble is, is we'd create them and we'd go to talk to them and we're like, oh, that's not quite right. Oh, let's change that. Oh, maybe we're not looking at this the right way. So we've had to go back and really refine how we're looking at the scorecards in order to uh, achieve success. So that was a process and gosh, I don't know, um, it probably took I don't know, six or eight months before we really kind of had it down, and we're still changing things. We change it all the time. Um, and so part of what, why I bring this up is as we're bringing new people into the organization, you know, we're looking for these attributes, and we're actually screening for them as we're talking to new folks um, to, join, to join our team. So, and if you think about the culture what we do from a marketing perspective then is we measure everything. Our 360 degree approach really starts from the content, the, um, the search, going onto our website. We are managing each and every touch point that we have from a marketing perspective and then integrating that into the, into the Domo scorecard. So this is a, a view of our MarTech stack. And if you look on the outside ring here, basically what you'll see is all the pieces and components of the technology that we're using. And you know some key areas here, of course the website, we've got to track and capture everyone that comes to the website. 
Marketo to automate everything. Um, Salesforce, you know, yes, Salesforce is a CRM tool. The way I think about Salesforce is it's really to ensure our lead attribution, to ensure our campaign tagging, and our sales intelligence. So I'm looking at it from the standpoint of what can it do for me from a marketing perspective. Um, and then we look to Domo to basically aggregate all of those pieces together, be able to pull data in from all those various components, and then analyze, and then finally adjust. So that's really the scorecard that we're all looking at uh, to measure the marketing. And if you think about who's using our data, we have one global CEO scorecard we have um, five sectors, um, and so each one of our sectors uh, has a scorecard. There's 30 business units that roll up to those sectors, and then our support organizations. So we're using data across the entire company, and my marketing team is a global one, and so basically my team is using this data in each and every business unit. And so we are examining every campaign type whether it's email or events or you know, web or SEO or social, each one of those is being um, examined. It's pulled into the Domo score scorecard. And then we can double click on any one of these areas to drill down and really understand at an account level, at a contact level, for each and every touch point, whether it's a first touch, mid touch, or last touch, we can really look at each one of those activities. And so that's incredibly important. And what we've been able to do with that is uh, really dig inside of it and do things like channel optimization. So one of the things that we're doing is we're looking at you know, which social channel is driving the most conversion and then being able to redirect our resources, whether it's LinkedIn or Twitter or what have you, um, to really optimize the channel. The other thing we're doing is we're looking at each and every tactic. And we have a, a weekly integrated marketing meeting where we're going through the various uh, scorecards and making sure that we're kind of drawing those conclusions and ensuring that we're uh, only doubling down on the best tactics. And it's a great way to be able to test things as well. So we do that. Um, events. So when, when we first started, um, we were on track to do 400 industry events. And if you all, you know that events are crazy expensive, right? And so what we were able to do through our use of data is to compile all that information and look at the events and only do those events that are generating the ROI that we expect. And so it's a, we actually reduce the number of events from 400 to about 100. The other thing is it gave us confidence to invest more in paid media. So what we were able to do is look at, we had three campaigns that were very, very similar offering campaigns, and we were, able, we were able to put paid media behind one of them, and the other two, we, we honestly didn't have the marketing investment to be able to put paid media be, behind it. And so what we did is then we used that as an opportunity to measure. And so we looked at the web traffic, we looked at the leads, the quality of the leads, and the conversion rate of those leads and found that where we used paid media, it was about a 10x increase um, in the traffic and the leads over uh, not using paid media in the, same, in the same way. So again, it gave us the confidence. And then we also measure our, we were able to look at the performance of gated content on our web versus ungated and be able to say, okay, we need to make a strategic investment um, in our online content um, based, on, based on the data. So those are the things that we were able to do. And then the other thing that we were able to do is, uh, and I remember this, uh, and I'll tell you some stories about the how in a little bit, 
but um, we were able to increase our conversion rate from about 25% um, from 2017 to 36% in 2018. And one of the things that we were also able to do, and again in this weekly integrated uh, marketing meeting, is we looked at the different business groups. And we were able to benchmark across those different business groups to say, you have a 6% conversion rate. Why is that? Or you have a 35% conversion rate. And be able to really look at what was going on and what was driving those conversion rates, sharing best practices across my team so that we could increase everyone's conversion rate. And by the end of 2018, it was tracking to about 40%, and that's where we are today. And then the other um, piece is all about the sales integration. And so one of the things about this is really changing the behaviors. So we now work hand in glove with our sales team and our sales uh, effectiveness team because we have all of these marketing leads that we nurture and qualify and then move into um, sales accepted, but then what we're able to do is work with each of our sales organization to make sure that they are you know, qualifying that lead, understanding if there's an opportunity, converting those contact, contacts, and then attaching the opportunity to the contact, um, and finally ensuring that the opportunities are tagged to the campaigns. And by doing that, we're able to make sure that they're following up on those leads, but also that we can show our leadership where each piece is and where they are in the sales, in the salesforce.com steps in the sales funnel. And so this is hugely important. And when we show this to our leadership team and moreover to our sales team, it gets you instant credibility and they, then they want to work with you. And they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that, I, you, know, that you were generating these leads. And um, we have about a 40% conversion rate of our uh, marketing qualified leads to sales qualified leads. So that speaks to the, the quality of the leads that they're getting. And if they know that 40% you know, of the marketing qualified leads are going to turn into something with an opportunity, well, then they're going to be much more inclined to uh, follow up on those leads. And that's what we're seeing happening. So um, as I mentioned, it's all about changing the perception of the function. And we've done that with the ROI. And I'm going to show you the ROI that we've been able to generate in a minute. Um, but really demonstrating proof that this really works. And the way we do that is we have quarterly business reviews with our senior leadership team, including our CEO. And as we were going to those quarterly business reviews, what we would do is we would actually show an account that went to close one, and we took them through the journey, the marketing journey in every single touch point, so that we would, you know, they were talking about, I remember the first one we did, Dova Pharmaceuticals. They were they had come in through the website, and we were able to show our CEO, OK, they went to the website, and then they did this, and they downloaded this, and they went to this event. And yeah, sales was involved too. But it really helped to demonstrate how much we were able to achieve um, through, uh, through our data and the, the scorecards that we have. The other thing that we were able to achieve, and this is uh, thanks to this gentleman, Lyndon By, sitting in the front seat, is bringing all these disparate uh, s systems together because we're supporting multiple businesses. We had multiple instances of Marketo. We had multiple instances of Salesforce.com. We had to basically move to one, one instance of Marketo, one instance of Salesforce.com, and then stitch together everything in that MarTech stack so that we could drill down and, and actually show all the results that we were, we were achieving. So all of that is, is what's enabled us to create these scorecards, both at the CEO level, at my level, and then at the sector level, so that we can, um, we can demonstrate uh, the value that we're bringing. So you might ask, you know, how 
how did you do that? And, um, you know, it was, uh, it was not easy. Um, but there's some key areas that I think really made a difference. And the first is that we settled on a standard set of KPIs. And so we created those KPIs, and, um, and then we created a weekly review. And in that weekly review, um, each of my sector leaders had to go through their DOMO scorecard. And as they went through their DOMO scorecard, you know, it was a very much of a collaborative learning approach. So there were no bad questions, and it was completely fine if they uh, didn't know the answer, as long as it was in service of learning. So that was the first thing that we did. Um, and then we used that data in the quarterly business reviews with our CEO. But then the next thing is, is we brought all the silo data together into that single unified scorecard. Uh, it helped that we centralized the marketing function so it was under one leader. Um, but we also made sure that we included the goals, um, the, the KPIs that we had agreed to in our annual performance goals. So each one of my leaders has specific goals. How many leads are you gonna generate? How much pipeline are you gonna generate? And that really uh, helped as well. The third area is the, we went from being, you know, just a bunch of marketing tactics to really strategic marketing campaigns. And those campaigns were loaded into salesforce.com so that every single uh, investment that we make in marketing is in salesforce.com. And again, those weekly reviews. But we had to shift, right? We had to shift from a gut culture. That's what marketing generally is. Oh, I think this is working great. My customers tell me they saw this to a very much of a data-driven culture. And these weekly performance meetings, we actually had some fun with it. And we talked about um, transitioning from data novices to data ninjas. And if any of you have seen American Ninja, where the guy falls into the pit, you know, because he didn't get the answer right or he couldn't hold on. We kind of joked about that and we cheered the people that could get through their Domo scorecard um, every week without a mistake. And we helped those that couldn't along the way, so it created a little friendly competition and helped people, uh, you know, just feel comfortable. And, you know, we didn't know. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I, I am to Linden. What does that mean? I couldn't say that out loud, but, um, you know, so that was a, a big piece of it. Um, we talked about the events, but one of the things that we did when we went from 400 events to 100 events is we actually put a stake in the ground and we stopped all events. With our CEO's support, we said, halt. There will be no more events until we go through and review each and every event. So the, the crazy thing, the wild thing is that we you know, even if it was an event in two weeks, time out, we're pulling out, we didn't go. And that gave us the incentive and in all of the business units the incentive to really do the tracking um, because they knew that unless uh, it had appropriate ROI, uh, we were never putting them back on the table. And they know going forward that we're not doing an event if, if there's no ROI in the system. And then finally, um, you know, really creating that holistic view of everything marketing and measuring everything. So it's all about bringing it all together, measuring it, and we still have a weekly integrated marketing meeting, and we're still pulling out the insights um, that, we ha that we see from Marketo, so, or from Domo, so that we can um, make sure that we're doing the right thing and, and spending our limited resources uh, on the right stuff. So um, we talked about a lot of these benefits already, but a single source of the truth, um, that really is incredible. But it also gave us simpl simplified response time. So when we were doing that event roll up, oh my God, we had spreadsheets and we had version control and we were trying to pull them all together and, you know, and the same thing for our quarterly business reviews before we, we implemented Domo is there, it was, it was crazy how much time we were spending pulling together all the information to try to measure this stuff, where now we can just easily go in and say, oh, this is the answer. It's instant. 
um, the real-time optimization and decision making on you know what channel we're using or you know how the different uh, tactics are working. We have that the collaboration with sales, which has been a huge in, uh, influence and a, and a huge positive. In fact, my team now sits on each of my sector leaders now sits on the weekly forecasting call. Um, with the sales organization, so creating that uh, that partnership, um, we talked about increasing the the um, uh, the function, the marketing function, and how we're perceived. Um, and I'll talk about the attribution in a moment. But we've also been able to increase our Domo instance. So we went from 25 users um, in marketing to 50 users, and then on the um, on the uh, finance side, we actually have a 500-person installation that was all based on the success that we've been seeing. And then from a overall perspective, you know, I think this is the slide that, that tells the story the most, is that we increased our number of leads by 84%. We had a 173% increase in the sales qualified leads. Um, we increased our um, our marketing influenced revenue by 14x, and we don't do attribution. We don't say um, a certain percentage of this deal was based on marketing, um, because our CEO is basically, uh, he's gonna recognize that you sold this deal, it was a $60 million deal. And if I tried to tell him that I accounted, or that marketing uh, contributed six million of that, or some percentage, he won't buy into that. And so we basically measure two things. We measure the total influenced by marketing and then the direct um, revenue or the direct pipeline. And that means that it started, its first, first touch was a, a marketing activity. Um, but going back to the, to the metrics, a 22x increase in pipeline and then that 10% uh, increase in conversion rate. So those are all the uh, benefits that we've been able to achieve um, by this, uh, this Domo integration and uh, utilization. And again, Lyndon uh, was able to really help us along the way. Um, and, and that's really our story. So that's how we did it. And uh, I'm happy to take questions. Lin Lyndon is here from a uh, technology perspective, and he can answer questions as well. Um, but happy to happy to ask or answer any questions. Sure. And Lyndon has a microphone, or Jesse has a microphone as well. Hi. You kind of just answered this. So, was there someone? Our, I guess our marketing team is really one of the only groups that doesn't utilize Domo. Um, was there someone on your team that kind of helped facilitate the card creation, or is that where kind of he came into play, or how was that kind of married into the technology side with the marketing side? So good question, and, and Domo is part of the marketing team, and so it was, and, and Domo wasn't your first job, Lyndon, but you know, I mean, as far as part of the marketing team, but he had a passion for it and really understood it and was a, and knew enough about all the other systems, Salesforce, Marketo, et cetera, to do all that back end linkage, as well as um, work with the great team here at Domo to, uh, to make sure it's all integrated. I think it helps when you've got a digital marketing background, like web analytics, Salesforce, Marketo, and all those things, and you, you're just binding those together. And then um, you just work as a team in making sure that you've got the right answer. Yep. Good. Sure, Jeff. I'm wondering, Tracy, if, if you're like now collecting new data, data that maybe you weren't getting in the past to help you with your analysis, and are, are you, you know, kind of where do you see that going? Yeah, every day, we're looking at new things and new ways of collecting data or looking at data. So for example, um, we implemented a new solution on our website called Uber, Uberflip that um, allows you to uh, pull up all your insights and all your content. Um, and so what we had to do is, is work to create a connection 
into DOMO so that we're me measuring that data. But in addition, I just saw how for Domo Palooza, they have a whole Domo dashboard just for registration and and we have one little we have one little tile. And so I'm like, oh, guess what? We're gonna create, you know, a whole a whole system around that um, to measure. So every day um, we're looking at more and more things. Um, you know, the next thing we've got to do is for analyst relations, industry analyst relations, creating a scorecard around the types of engagement, you know, so uh, yeah, every day we're looking at different different things, and I my mind was going a million miles an hour this morning with the machine learning and thinking, okay, what can we do with that that will help make it even even more uh, pow pow powerful? So, sure. Yeah. So, if, for folks that may not have heard the question, it was, "What advice do you have for somebody that's just starting out from a marketing perspective?" And what I would say is, um, start small. Um, one of the things that we did is we piloted this with one business unit, and so we could really dig in, really create a, a culture of learning because um, folks have they're afraid. Right, and if if they get punished or not punished, but if they get, we, you want to make it easy and open for them to ask questions. And then I think it's critical to have somebody like a Linden on your team who can you know dig inside of it and ask the questions and go back to Domo and you know and find different ways and also be flexible. I mean we. Oh gosh, we you know we looked at some things and we're like, why are we looking at this? You know, it does, it, if it's not helping you, you know, send it overboard and look at the next thing. So, yep. uh, yes, uh, can you elaborate all on the, the digital media side uh, and how Marketo and all the different digital media channels, how you've been able to integrate all of those sub channels across all of your different uh, business units and so forth? So we, um, um, I think we sort of, uh, we're actually going through it again now, but we, uh, we made sure that our agencies were um, using UTM tracking. So all of the form fills on like the website, um, all of the ads, displayed media, paid social or anything like that, all of those different channels, even the organic channels as well. That's one thing I recommend that you do, you measure your organic so that you can see all these different traffics coming in. Um, you sort of measure people on like a first touch basis. And this is what I say is that start small and so measure sort of your any touch and see how you're doing. And then as you start to expand and you realize you're getting more and more touches, then try and sort of pick key points where you think you've been, um, um, that have been important to sort of closing these deals. So the basis of UTM tracking and all of that just goes in, into Marketo Marketo is, um, is part of our source of truth, um, but then that sort of syncs with Salesforce um, and any of the important fields that are then driving revenue or pipeline, those will then go through into Salesforce. Is that? Yeah. Good. All right. Any other questions? Standing between you guys and cocktail. Sure. <laughs> So website is a nice channel, email is a nice channel, ads are a nice channel, but they kind of go back to your website. Then there's everything else, social media, Instagram, all the stuff that your customers are touching. Have you figured out how to like pull that together and say, oh, they were here and they were there and they were, with, unless they like filled out a form or so something we struggle with. So you want to talk with. about social a little bit? Tell them about how you've solved the holy grail of attribution and figuring out what works out. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we've been working with the team as far as attribution and sort of uh, uh, trying to understand the best things. Um, there are certain things that you can't measure um, or, or, or we haven't reached out to measure. There's like, um, you know, the way that YouTube sort of uh, measures things on their platform might not be exactly the same as what Twitter are measuring on their platform. So don't sort of knock yourself down for that. 
Um, just like start measuring the important metrics. Um, it, if you've got data that you want to upload uh, that you pulled in from Facebook or Twitter or um, um, upload that into Salesforce as part of a Salesforce campaign. So what we're doing, we're, um, we're extensively using Salesforce campaigns now when we're using a parent-child methodology so that you have an integrated campaign. And then if you want those different channels, um, be it events or be it, tw um, be it social, be it paid search um, or, or just form fills or, or anything else that people want to add or advisors or anything and just do that and bring that into Salesforce. And then it's off to sales then to make sure that they're, they're attributing and we've automated areas of that as well. And, and one thing Sorry. also, uh, you talk, go ahead, you talk about the uh, parent and child, like we have a suite at MSG, and so our suite at MSG is one campaign, but then each individual event, whether it's a Billy Joel concert or a, a Knicks game or whatever, is a child event, under a child campaign under that total MSG campaign, so that we're measuring not only the individual um, uh, events, but the, the whole MSG suite as a whole. So. so here's a related question. Do you ever try to recreate or backtrack attribution? So I'm a, I'm a home builder. We sell homes, and people come to us through a, a channel called Realtor, and the realtors think that they are the secret. But we, we understand, we, we, like, we'll, we think our marketing goes out and touches them, but they come through a different channel. So if you could think of email. Do you, do you go back and try to like cookie them after the sale and figure out where they came from? Go ahead. So with email, you've got to have their email address in the first place. So we sort of class email as an existing relationship. Um, but that's recorded it, or, or it's been imported from a list. So that list might have um, come from something that you've, uh, you've obtained from like a platform or somewhere else. Um, so we class that as an existing relationship, and again, if you want to import that list in, into Marketo or bring it into Salesforce, then you can do it that way. Was your question more about sort of, you know that the attribution or the sale was that, and you just want to work it backwards and see if... Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what sort of um, the um, uh, the pharmaceuticals firm that we saw that you know we realised that um, that they had actually came in and that was the that that uh, that was the ignition um, and that just let everything off um, and once we realised that there was a large deal that sort of came from something like that then that sort of drove that sort of drove the the further investigation of routing backwards um, and you know we realised that they had a cookie. Um, that came from a, pay, um, a paid media ad. Um, and again, you can go back and refine those ads, um, but don't go too granular because you've got to present to people like the C-suite and the people that are paying all your, all your costs and everything like that. Um, so don't go too complicated. Just give them the answers that they're asking for. Uh, just don't give them too much information and don't go too, too granular. You know, it's a, whether it be that specific email, just look at that whole integrated campaign, because that was the important thing that you had probably had that budget for in the first place, you know? Yeah. But we do, we do go backwards. We do um, go back and, and attribute where it's, where it's appropriate, you know? So. One of the things I've seen Conduit do right, is uh, make sure that they're capturing data from a variety of sources, not just the Marketos, and if you saw back, if you know, in earlier in Tracy's presentation, like a, a variety of sources, and then they're not overcomplicating the analytical part by having shared goals. Some of the shared goals and the measuring the total and not working, worrying so much about the sum of the parts, uh, is part of the sauce I think that gets people using uh, Domo well at your organization. They're not arguing so much about who gets the credit; they're talking about the end goal, and how can you optimize the end goal? Um, I don't see that in every organization that I, I work with. Yep. Good point. All right. Any others? All right. Well, thank you all. I appreciate it, and hope you have a good rest of your day.